So listen here. So we will first start with what is the term zoogeography. Here you can find two branches combined together. One is zoology, that is why zoo is there. And second part is geography. And in this geography, what we are studying, we are studying about the air. Basically, we are studying about the surface features of the air. That is what we are studying in geography. So, here two branches are combined. And uh, actually, it is now known as biogeography. Biogeography is the main branch. It is split into two branches. One is zoo geography. And the other is phytogeography. Basically, this zoogeography and phytogeography deals with the distribution of animals on the surface of the earth. So, biogeography is dealing with the distribution of plants and animals on the surface of the earth. And we can find that branch is divided into zoogeography as well as phytogeography. In the case of zoogeography, we are finding that is about the distribution of animals on the surface of the earth. Surface of the earth means either on land or on the on water. Oceans are also the part of the earth's surface. Now in this phytogeography, phyto means plant. So it is dealing with the distribution of plants. So this is how the, the branch zoogeography is the main, uh, main uh, area of the zoogeography concerned with the distribution of animal species and their characteristic, their, their attributes means characteristic. So, in addition to that, zoogeography also study the patterns of animal distribution. That is, animals are, for example, if you take an elephant, we can find elephant in Asia, maybe in India, Sri Lanka, in Thailand, Burma, and in few countries, uh, only, only in few countries. And if you go and if you go to Africa, we can find a different type of elephant. That is all very but a separate genus. But if you go to Europe, Australia, Antarctica, South America, or North America, we cannot find any elephant. So elephants are also only present in certain continents of the world. So it shows a, a special pattern. And just like that, several animals are showing such patterns. And in zoogeography, we are studying about such patterns exhibited by the animals. So that is another aspect of the zoogeography. So as we have already studied that there are two main broad, so primarily it is a biogeography. In the of biogeography, it is divided into zoogeography as well as the phytogeography. Zoogeography is concerned with the animal distribution. Phytogeography is concerned with the plant distribution. Now again we are finding a completely different classification based on the ecological aspect. So that there is a ecological zoogeography and historical zoogeography. In this of ecological zoogeography, they are studying the role of present biotic and abiotic interaction uh, in influencing animal distribution. What is the what is the meaning of the, the studies the role of present biotic? Bio means always concerned with the animals. Abiotic means mainly this abiotic means non-living. The, the soil is a non-living thing. The temperature is a non-living thing. Humidity is a non-living. So how this temperature, humidity, uh, the characteristics of the soil are all influencing the distribution of animal. So these are so how they are interacting. Interacting means they are working together. For example, if you come, if you take the case of Kerala, we have plenty of rainfall. But you go to Rajasthan, we, 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 you may not be able to get, we, we cannot see so much rainfall. You go to Sahara, there is very little rainfall. So, there are some features of the earth which are influencing the presence or absence of animals in those areas. So, that is what is the what is coming under the ecological zoogeography. Ecological zoogeography is mainly dealing with the, how biotic and abiotic factors are interacting with, the, uh, in, uh, with one another and influencing the presence or absence of the certain animals in certain areas of the world. So that aspect is known as ecological zoogeography. Now here we have another brand that is historical zoogeography. 
can find the definition on screen. It is basically concerned with the historical reconstruction of the origin, dispersal, and extinction of ta taxa. Taxa means an animal group. So, what is that? It is dealing with the historical reconstruction. Now, if you take the, uh, the class of uh, evolutionary human beings, it begins in uh, around two lakhs years back, and there are different uh, different forces of human beings. Shooting the evolution of horse, they actually the horse was very small, dog-sized animal in the beginning. From the dog-sized animal, it gradually increases in size. So, if you take the history of the horse, or history of the elephant, or history of any animal group on the surface of there, we can find that they are showing a pattern. So, in the case of horse, they have their origin was from a dog-sized animal called Hierocotherium. Maybe you have studied in plus two. I have a theorem or a yogi person. Or you will be studying in evolution. More about that. So, from that small dog sized animal, now it has reached a large animal up to six feet or something. And the height will be around six feet. So, in the use of that, we are studying about how the horse has, horse has evolved or formed from a small animal to a large animal. That kind of that kind of aspects are studied under the historical zoogeography. So historical zoogeography mainly deals with distribution of animal fossils in different parts of the world. Now we know that the, there are dinosaurs are there, and from different parts of the world we are discovering fossils of dinosaurs. But now there are no dinosaurs. And what happened to dinosaurs? Scientists say that around 65,000 years back, there was a strike by a meteorite, and that resulted in a, a nuclear explosion like event. And the entire, uh, the, 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 there was a lot of dust, soil, and uh, the, the, the dust is covering the entire atmosphere, and no sunlight was penetrating below. The, the earth became more colder. And the cold resulted in the death or this uh, extinction of all the dinosaurs. This is the uh, explanation given by the scientists, and they have a lot of evidence in support of that. So, if we are looking that, we can find every animal is progressing from different fossil stages, and these fossil stages are studied under the historical zoogeography. So, we have we have already seen there are four branches: zoogeography and phytogeography. And zoogeography is again divided into ecological zoogeography, basically dealing with interaction of plants and animals and their non-living thing. And as well as the historical zoogeography, mainly dealing with the distribution of fossil stages in different parts of the world. Then we have we are going to a, another a, a topic in that the zoogeographic provinces are regions of distinct fauna. Provinces simply means a large area. In, in, in India, we are using the term uh, uh, state, but if you go to some countries, we this, uh, instead of state, we are they are using the term provinces. So provinces are very large areas. So uh, and these large areas are always showing their own distinct fauna. Fauna means animals. So animals present in one part. For example, animals present in Kerala are completely different from the animals that we are finding in Saharan region. Or, or you are going to Europe, their animal diversity is very less. So in every, every major area of the world, we are finding a unique type of animals. And that is what is studied under the zoogeography. And the, based on the taxonomic and uh, the based on the taxonomic and phylogenetic relationship of animals, and not on the adaptation of animals to the specific environment. So this kind of zoogeographic provinces are basically uh, based around certain aspects on the taxonomy. Taxonomy means how the animals are classified. Second is phylogeny. Phylogeny basically deals with the evolutionary, evolutionary origin of the animals. So these are the two aspects which are coming under the zoogeographic classification. And based on the uh, morphology as well as evolutionary history, the animals are again uh, again put into separate zoogeographical region. One way of looking at this is to think of the fauna of each province as constituting a gene pool 
available to the forces of natural selection to adapt to animal life to variety of habitats present in the particular region. It's a very large sentence. We can split it into smaller um, sentence. So one way of looking at this is to think of fauna of each region. You take the fauna of Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is an island. Now you take the elephant of India and the elephant of Sri Lanka. Do you know there is one major difference between the elephant present in Sri Lanka as well as the elephant present in Kerala? Can anybody say? There is an important difference between the elephant seen in Kerala as well as in Sri Lanka. In the case of Sri Lankan elephants, they do not have tusk. They do not have tusk. No tusk, what is it? That is the meaning of the word tusk. So Sri Lankan elephants do not have tusk. The male and female are looking same. So why that happened? That is Sri Lankan elephants are having an entirely different type of genes. That is the that, that aspect is come. That is each province is constituting a separate gene pool or separate type of genes. That is why the elephant present in, uh, in uh, Kerala and elephant present in Sri Lanka are entirely different. Then uh, if you go to the African countries, now uh, because of the increased animal uh, elephant poaching, there are the days of Africa, the male elephant as well as female elephants are having tusks. But the number of uh, uh, new in the in the in the new birth, the scientists are saying that there is more more or more formation of elephants which do not have tusk because right now tusk is a disadvantage for the elephant. If a tusk is present, there is every possibility that it is captured and killed, and the tusk will be uh, taken. So now there is an increased uh, formation, increased uh, development of elephants which do not have tusk. So this kind of changes are taking place. So each area, each geographical area will be having its own separate type or separate gene pool or separate kind of genes. And natural selection is working on this and leading to the formation of new species. Right now the Indian elephant and Sri Lankan elephant are completely uh, slightly different. And if this process is going on for several millions of years ago, millions, so obviously they become two separate species. Right now they are only two subspecies. The elephant present in Kerala and Sri Lanka are slightly different only. But the, I don't know whether they are completely different or whether they are subspecies. But they have some, uh, some differences. But if this process is going on for several millions of years, gradually they become two separate species. So these are the aspects which are we are studying under the zoogeography. Here you can find there is an important map that shows how the world is divided into very large areas and with these, uh, these very large areas with the distinct animal fauna or animals is known by realms you don't uh, just R-E-L-M-S don't pronounce A realms they are known as realms realms means very large area and each large area will be having its own specific type of animals and also sometimes plants are also there, but basically they are, they are, their classification is basically based on animals. So each large area, here you can find there are, for example, the, 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 you take the Indian region. The Indian region is known as the Oriental region. Oriental means East. So if you take the animals of uh, uh, this region, you can find, for example, you take the uh, animals present in Kerala, and you go to Thailand, Malaysia, we can find almost same kind of insects, same kind of butterflies, same kind of spiders, and same kind of lower mammals. So we can see that all the uh, all these areas are sharing some of the same gene pool, and they are exhibiting almost similar type of uh, animals. So that is why they are all placed under a very large group known by the Oriental group or Oriental realm. So here we can find different types of realm. One is Oriental realm. Then we have Oceania, we have Neartic realm, and Neo Neotropical realm, then Paleartic realm, then Australian realm. So these are the six major realms. In addition to that, we have also Antarctic realm and also Oceania. So there are all to the eight realms are there. A realm simply means a very large geographical area. A very large geographical area. Showing a special kind of animal, special type of animals there. Okay.
the division of land masses to the well according to their dis, uh, distinct fauna that it is based on that that we have this uh, this classification as game for now here we can find the contribution of some of the major scientists one is pm sclater pl sclater the idea of geography is originally contributed by pl sclater you can find a picture of him he studied the geographical distribution of birds in his paper scheme distribution avm geography it's written in italian uh, not italian greek or some uh, or maybe maybe latin that is why the term is like it said, simply means uh, the geographical distribution of birds that is the english translation in that uh, in that book he studied about the distribution of birds in different parts of the world and based on his uh, studies on the bear, bear distribution he came to certain conclusions that each geographical major area of the world are for our having its own particular type of bird species so based on that he divided the continents into six geographical regions and put them into clusters cluster means to major group the first major group is known by the name creatio paleogena and second major group is known by the name creatio neogena so here we can find two major groups one is creatio paleogena and creatio neogena now going to the paleogena the paleogena basically consists of old world countries or old world continent and neogena basically include new uh, north america as well as south america so if you remove north america and south america all the other continents are part of old world new world means um, in north america and south america because uh, columbus discovered that a bunch of later that's why they are not as a new world now another scientist known by the name huxley they grouped four regions that cover africa eurasia eurasia means europe plus asia and north america that is a northern continents that is all these northern continents here you can find all the northern continents here you can find that this is the uh, north america this is uh, asia and europe all these northern continents are put into one category that is known as arctogea arctogea so arctogea includes all the continents which are located on the north of of the world or north of the world or north of the earth so all the northern continents are coming under the term arctogea now we have another group that is nortogea nortogea means southern uh, group for example southern means basically this uh, south america is the Australia is the and a portion of uh, of, of Africa, but under the Nortogea, only uh, South American continent and Australian continent are included. So here we are finding two major classification. One is Arctogea and second one is Nortogea. Arctogea mainly deals with the northern continents and Nortogea is dealing with the southern continents. Now we come to another another scientist that is Wallace. so there are two we have about two scientists we have already studied one is clayter and he was studying about the distribution of birds and based on the study the distribution of bird species he divided the world into six major region then we have huxley huxley divided uh, combined the northern continents into arctogea and there is a nortogea then comes the third uh, scientist that is wallace wallace was an important scientist in the Uh, uh, who contributed a lot of uh, ideas into that sort of geography, and Wallace combined Sclater's and Huxley's classification, and he also modified a, a slight, uh, slight change in that. Earlier, this uh, this group was uh, this was known as Indian region because India was a prominent country in there, and uh, and and the India and uh, Indian name has been re renamed as the Oriental. Oriental means east. Because all these uh, Europeans, uh, they are living in the west, and so I call them India is in the east. So they are renamed it as Oriental. Other than that, there is not much uh, difference from what the Huxley and uh, uh, the Sclater have have proposed. So presently, 
we are following a system um, that is uh, accept that is put forward by Wallace, and that classification is, uh, is generally accepted and it is followed nowadays. Now, one more classification is there. That is a classification proposed by Blank Four. And going to the classification proposed by the Blank Four, we can find there are three major divisions: Arctogia means uh, Eurasia, North America, and Africa. That is the Arctogia. Then we have South American region and we have Australian region. So these are the three major divisions according to the classification proposed by Blank Four. So there are different classification. We have already seen classification proposed by Slater, classification given by the Huxley, classification given by the Wallis. Then fourth one is the, uh, the classification given by the Blanford. Or basically all are sharing almost similar features except some minor variations. Now another classification. Another classification is the classification given by Darlington. And what Darlington was saying, he was saying that there are uh, six major regions. Neartic region, Paleartic region, Neotropical region, Ethiopian region, Oriental region and Australian region. This is also what Duvalis has also said. Now this is the most accepted type of classification. Now recently along with these two, uh, six major realms we have ordered added on uh, two more realms that is Oceania as well as Antarctic realm. Now this is the geographical regions of the world in 1876. You look at that map. So how accurate the uh, the diagrams of the uh, wireless? If you if you because in 1876 there was no satellite photography. Still the map drawn by them is almost precise to the modern map. So the, 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 now the scientists are drawing the map basically based on satellite photography. That's not easy. But even in 1870, they have made very very accurate maps, and which is based on that they have classified the world into six major realms. Now we have to now we have to study about the uh, different types of realms. So in zoo geography, basically you are studying about six major realms. And we have to understand what are the features of animals present in each realm or each major region. Okay, so this is a, this is a, a brief idea regarding the different realm. Here you have Neartic realm. Neartic simply means North America. So North America, you can find the basic features of North American continent. There are tundra are present, grasslands are present, forests and deserts are present. And another important feature of the Neartic region is that they were uh, they have has been separated from Neotropical by desert until about three million years ago. That is neotropical means South American continent. And this South American continent and uh, uh, North American continent are presently connected by a, a strip of land called Panama. You may have heard about Panama Canal and other. So Panama Canal was not the, 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 the land of Panama Strait. That was not there about 3 million years. That is about 30, mil, 30 lakhs years back. There was no Panama, only North American continent and South American continent, and there was no connection. And this Panama, the Panama state of Panama, as the land bridge of Panama has been formed several times in the history of the world. Right now, the, there is a land bridge formed of Panama. But 30 lakhs back, years back, for 3 million years back, there was no land connection. So that was the situation. Then another is the Paleartic. Palea, paleo means old. So under the Paleartic, basically the old the Asian regions are coming. A large part of Russia is coming. Here you can see that. Then most of the European regions are coming under the Paleartic region. And uh, the important features of the Paleartic region, they have tundra. Tundra means snow-covered regions. 
then grasslands are the prairie grasslands are the forest and deserts are the like gobi desert you have statens then uh, we can then uh, if we go to the um, middle east there also some deserts are the then uh, uh, these are the major features of the paleartic region and third region is a neotropical region here you can see that this is a neotropical region so neotropical region basically includes uh, south america and the central america this area is known as the central america so that is a neotropical now if you look at the neotropical region the one feature of the neotropical region equator is passing through the uh, this neotropical region and because of that in most of the neotropical region are thickly covered you know about amazon forest so amazon forest is one of the uh, always called the green lung of the world <clears throat> because if amazon forest is destroyed the production of oxygen and, and by the by the by the uh, trees will be significantly reduced so amazon is important important uh, lungs uh, and important is acting as a lungs for the world then another is that this neotropical ethiopian oriental they were at earlier together they were earlier remained together as a single continent you have studied in 8th standard maybe 9th standard about the uh, gondwana land about gondwana land you might have studied that millions of years back these three continents were together we have a lot of evidences for that right now also continents are slowly moving from one another maybe 1 cm each year 1 cm each year is hardly noticeable but scientists are now able to measure that using precise instruments then they are now separated by oceans so these three regions there is now south america africa and india and maybe a large part of it uh, india are actually together that is why right now if you take the animals of asia now you know animals of india and animals of africa we can find lot of similarity there is elephant in india there is elephant in africa there is a lion in india there is a lion in africa so there are a lot of similarities between and if you take the lower animals also even in the use of insects and spiders we can find lot of similarities and these similarities are coming uh, uh, have formed because they were together once around the several million years back there are 250 billion years back the all these continents were together and there that was known as the gondwana land now we have australian region in this australian region australia is now separate from most of the major continents but that was not the case earlier there was a land connection from india up to australia the here you can find a series of islands all these islands are connected from one point to the one another so in this of australia one important feature of the australia australia is a country about two and a half times larger than india so india is about 32 square kilometer 32 lakh square kilometer and australia is around 77 and lakh square kilometer that is 2.5 times bigger than india and one important feature of the australia is that the major cities of australia are, are are on the are on the margin of australia the center of australia is basically desert australia is a very large country but major portion of australia are deserts only the people are only living on the fringes or on the board or on the margins of australian continent so that is the case of australia so these are the major uh, realms of the world and the what we are going to study in coming classes are that we have to take each realm and we have to study what are the geographical features of that region what are the type of animals or faunistic features or faunistic features of that region what type of animals are present in each region then we have to also study about what are the sub regions that we are, that we can find in each each realm so basically we are studying about uh, the all the that means under the geography we are basically studying about six major region or six major realms of the world so that is that is what we are coming we are will be studying in the coming classes so right now we will be stopping here
okay this i have already used so for today's class we can limit here in the next class we will be taking one rel and we will be studying in detail about the features of that region